قرآن كريم محفوظ والمؤمن اللي يفوز يشفى له في البلوى My name is Muhammad Uwais bin Ismail. My metric number 118-1062. Amin Ikhwan bin Imran Metric number 118-1067 Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Today, I will talk about Sulaiman bin Mihran Sulaiman bin Mehran, or better known as Al-Aqmash, is one of the famous Muslim scholars from Kufa, Iraq. He was classified in the last of Tabi'in. Kufa is the one of the cities in Iraq about 170 km south of Baghdad and 10 km northeast of Najaf. He is located on the bank of the Euphrates River. The estimated population in Kufa was 110,000 citizens. Along with Samara, Karbala, Kadimia, and Najaf, Kufa is one of five Iraqi cities that are of great importance to Shia Muslims. History of Kufa After the Arab victory against the East Roman Empire at Battle of Yamak in 636 AD, Kufa was founded and given its name about the same time as Basra. The companion of the Prophet, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, founded it as an encampment adjacent to the Lakhmid Arab city. In the era of Khalif Ali, he was shifted the capital from Manina to Kufa to manage the military borders more effectively. After Khalif Ali died, they were rebellion from Khalif Ali followers. The Dissemination Education in Kufa there are two eras in Kufa, which is Umayyad and Abbasid's era. There are differences between in these two era, which is the development of education in Abbasid was faster than Umayyad era. This is because there are many rebellions has happened, especially from Shia. So the Caliph have moved the capital city of Iraq from Kufa to Baghdad in order to focus more on the strengthening education and economic systems. The Khalif can more concentrate on the spread of Islam and builds the knowledgeable community. The Scholars of Kufa Abu Ishaq as sabii one of the great scholars that lived in Kufa in the time of al aqmash His name is Amar bin Abdillah al-Hamdani al-Kufi. He was born in Khalif Usman Affan on 35 AD. He was very lucky because he had a chance to learn and meet the companions. Among the companions that he had opportunity to meet and seek knowledge was Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan, Zaid ibn Arqam, Usama ibn Zaid. 
he was excellent in the field of fiqh in his era. Next, Hamad ibn Sulaiman. Hamad ibn Sulaiman al Kufi. He was salaf scholar, which was a great teacher to Al Akmash. He was a noble hearted and generous man. He loved and patient to seek knowledge with famous scholars in his era. It's narrated then when he recited Al Quran, full tears flowed down the page of the Al Quran. He studied with Ibrahim and Nakai for the longest time, took the knowledge of fiqh from him, and he was the greatest and fakih among the others disciple of Ibrahim and Nakai. Iman Hamad only mastered the sign of fiqh but was not ability to memorize the hadith. The next scholars live in Kufa, Imam Habu Hanifa. His name is Norman bin Sabit bin Zawta bin Ma'a. He was born in the city of Kufa, Iraq in 80 AD and died in 150 AD. There are several narrations that explain the reason he was called by Abu Hanifa. Firstly, it is because his son's name Hanifa. So Abu Hanifa means Hanifa's father. Second, Abu means servant. Hanifa means inclined. Abu Hanifa means the servant of Allah who is inclined to obey Allah. Third, he loved to write and compose the book. So he was called by his teacher and friends with Abu Hanifa because of Hanifa in Iraq it means in so Abu Hanifa means father of in background of Sulaiman bin Mihran al-A'mash the real name of Sulaiman bin Mihran is Sulaiman bin Mihran al-Asadi al-Kahili Abu Muhammad al-Kufi or better known as al-A'mash He is one of the famous Muslim scholars from Kufa, Iraq and was classified in the last of Tabi'in. Sulaiman bin Mihran is from Ar-Rayi and others said that he was born in the village where his family was born, where in Tabaristan in 61 Hijrah. Ar-Rayi and Tabaristan are an ancient province which now known as a province of Amal in Iran. Then, he moved to Kufa when he was child, but others say that he moved to Kufa when he was in his mother's womb. The journey of seeking knowledge, his teachers and students, Al-Amash began his journey of seeking knowledge in Kufa, Iraq, which was teeming with intellectual activity and prosperity. Many scholars and students went there to learn numerous of knowledge at the mosque, mats, and bookshops, which became central of knowledge. Al-Amash began as a student of many famous Islamic scholars such as Anas bin Malik. However, he never narrated anything from him. Other scholars are Abdullah bin Abi Awfa, Zaid bin Wahab, Abu Wa'il, and Esantra. Al-Hafiz has stated that students of Al-Amash are Al-Hakam bin Utaybah, Zubayd al-Yami, Abu Isha al-Suba'i, and Esantra. Death of Death As the Habib said, Al-Amash died on Rabi al-Awwal, 148 Hijrah in Kufa, Iraq. On that day also, a few scholars have died. They are Ja'far bin Muhammad al-Sadiq from Madinah, Sheikh Amru bin al-Harith, Sheikh Hamshu Muhammad bin al-Wali al-Zubaydi, Sheikh Wasid al-Awwam bin Hayshab from Egypt, and Muhammad bin Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla from Iraq. Okay, we will share with you all about the contribution of Al-Amash to the education system of his time. As we know, Al-Aqmash has learned from many scholars and also have many students come from various states to seek knowledge from him. Yahya Al-Khotan said in Siya A'lamin Nabla, Al-Aqmash is the smartest person about Islam with this position, many scholars are competing to get closer and even provide service. When he brought something, people competed to bring it. Ibn al-Madini also stated in his statement, There are sick people who maintain knowledge among the people of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. For the people of Makkah, there is Amru bin Dinar. For the people of Madinah, there is Muhammad bin Muslim al-Zuhri. For the people of Kufah, there is Abu Isha al-Sabi'i and Sulaiman bin Mehran al-A'mash and Yahya bin Abi Khathiran 
and Qatada in Basra. According to Ibn Masud, Al-A'mash knowledge concealed in Kufa is very attended by various levels of students. He also has a special mosque method with his home from direct learning process. Ibn Uyayna said Al-A'mash preceded the people by four. He used to recite them to the Quran, memorize them, the obligatory duties, and mention another characteristic. Next, we will see his contribution in the field of the Quran. According to Ahmad bin Abdullah al-Ajali, Al-Aqmash often reads the Al-Quran, is fluent in reading it, and one of the experts in its field. Al-Aqmash learned the Quran from his Quran teacher. His name is Talha bin Musharrif. Al-Aqmash also taught the Quran to the people in Kufa. Usually every day there is new information about the Quran along with its age and maturity. The villagers will find him and recite the Quran in front of him and he corrected the recitation. After that, we will see al Akmash contribution in Hadith field. He is capable at becoming a Hadith scholar, although he tested with a vision that short-sighted until he was known by the title al Akmash, it means a short-sighted person. He succeed narrated about 4,000 Hadiths. Ahmad bin Abdullah al-Ajali said, Al-A'mash is a proven trust. He was the updater of Kufa in his time, and he had 4,000 hadiths. In Mustala hadith, if a person has been labeled as trustworthy person, Suyqa, then he has become an authority source of reference. Although his lack of physical, the sincerity of the scholars of all among the Hadith figures in demanding knowledge and make a great contribution in the development of the study of Hadith knowledge. Personalities and Attitudes of al Amash. He has difficulty to convey the Hadith. Like be mentioned by Khatib al-Baghdadi in his book Sharaf Ashabul Hadith, Al Aqmash doesn't like to convey the hadith because he does not like the attitude of hadith students who like to gather around him to take hadith from him. Moreover, Al Aqmash is somebody very much resentful of glory and fame. Abu Muawiyah said, "I heard Al Aqmash saying, giving charity with a piece of bread, I would rather have than narrate seventy hadith." Abu Bakr bin Ayyaz told us, al Ahmad said, Nothing evil among the earth creatures than Hadith member. Then Abu Bakr said, I was disagreed at first with his statement until I saw what they did. Next, he has very rough personalities and bad manners toward others. Rahbah bin Muslamah came to al Ahmad asking for something. Then he frowned. Rahbah said, for God's sake, I know you always frown, easily get bored, like to underestimate guesses to a little gift when asked for wisdom. Muhammad bin Ubaid said, Allah Amash never let someone sit next to him. If someone sit next to him, he will stop reading the hadith and wake up. He also had one man. One day, that man sit next to him. He thought al Amash didn't notice. al Amash, who was aware of it, produced mercus and speaks towards that person. That man is kept silent for not wishing al Amash to stop the hadith reading. Third, strictly in order for the community to learn the hadith. Muhammad bin Ubaid told us, al Amash said, When I saw an elderly person who didn't learn the hadith, I want to slap his face. Abu Muawiyah Ad-Daril told us, I heard al Amas say, who doesn't learn hadith, I desperately want to slap his face with my slippers. 
Fourth, Al Aqmash very conscientious in defense of hadith. Abu Bakr bin Ayyash said, Al Aqmash continues to learn hadith until his death. Price of the scholars to Al Aqmash. Ali bin Al Madini, may Allah have mercy on him, gave a testimony about the capacity of Al Aqmash in narration his hadith. Al Aqmash has a hadith about 1,300 hadith. Sufyan bin Uyayna said, Al Aqmash is the person who most mastered the reading of Kitabullah, means Al Quran, most memorized hadith and most who know about the signs of Faraid. Mujahid said, If I had the strength, I would always have met this man. Isa bin Yunus said, We have never seen anyone like Al-Aqmash and have never seen a rich man who is more despised than when they were in event of Al-Aqmash, even though he, means Al-Aqmash, was a poor man. Waqib bin Al-Jarrah said, For almost 70 years, Al-Aqmash has never missed Takbir to Ihram in the implementation of correctional prayers, means never must book. Al-Qurubiyu said, Al-Aqmash is a person of worship and he is a person who always practice the Sunnah.